Hi, I'm Rick Kaler. Thanks for joining me. Estate planning, it matters. Not having a will can leave surviving family members to struggle with legal complexities, increased costs, strained relationships, as they struggle to make uh, decisions that they can only hope the deceased would have made. It really adds pain and heartache to the whole process. I've previously described failing to make a will as a last act of unkindness bestowed on one's loved ones. One thing I think that's worse than dying without a will is dying with the wrong will. I've sometimes seen this, uh, especially with new clients. One couple had made wills decades earlier before they had children. They assumed the wills provided for the two children they subsequently had and were shocked to realize that this wasn't the case. There was no provision in the will for any children born of the marriage. Everything would have gone to the wife's sister. They immediately made an appointment with an attorney who had them shred the old wills before him, <laughs> even before he drafted the new ones. He told them, you're better having no wills than these wills. Recently, I came across another example of something worse than having no will. Having two scribbled up, hard to decipher, handwritten wills that contradict each other. This was the case with Aretha Franklin, known as the Queen of Soul. She was famous for many hits such as Think, I Say a Little Prayer, and Respect. When she died in 2018, she left behind two handwritten wills that were found the following year. One was written in 2010, it was found in a cabinet. Another, written in 2014, was found in a, nut, in a notebook stuffed under the cushions of her sofa. Now her first mistake was obvious. A will stuffed in a sofa or hidden in a cabinet are not ideal places to store a will. Important documents need to be stored securely in a place known to the executor and copies given to trusted advisors. Now to her credit, at least Aretha listened to her attorney's advice that she needed to have a will. Don Wilson, an entertainment lawyer who represented her for many years, insisted that she have a will according to an article in the Associated Press in July of 2023. He was quoted as saying, but she was a very private person, and I think she didn't want to share that information with another individual, such as an attorney. She went ahead and wrote them up herself. That was her second mistake. Her, th her uh, third mistake was not invalidating the previous 2010 will when she wrote the new one in 2014. An attorney will make sure a client rights voided across an old will with the date and their initials. Her fourth mistake was not finding a professional advocate that she trusted to do the job right. The two wills led to a lengthy court battle among her uh, children. In a letter filed in a Detroit court, a niece who was listed as a co-executor in one of the wills wrote, Given my aunt's love of family and the desire for privacy, this is not what she would have wanted for us, nor is it what I want. That court battle was really expensive. The estate valued at 80 million as of her death remained in the control of her managers and attorneys during that time. Five years later, when the courts found that the 2014 will was the valid one, the estate value had fallen drastically to six million. This was due to manager fees, high legal fees, and IRS claims for unpaid income taxes. If you have young children, if you own family heirlooms you would like to preserve, if you're charitable in nature, or have strong opinions about who gets anything you may own, it's really important to have a will. And don't write it yourself. Spend the money to give a gift of clarity and harmony to your survivors. 
have a well-drawn and properly executed will. It's a final act of love and respect. Thanks for joining me.